What is the best SD card for your camera? That is exactly the question that you and I are going to answer here in this video because that's the keywords. Your camera and the SD card, those are the ones that you need to match in order to know what is best for you because there are many, many types out there. You can spend a lot of money on them and you could potentially buy the wrong thing or maybe you have some of these things lying around at home and you simply want to know, you know, are these old cards still going to be okay for the new camera that I just got? So in order to understand this, you need to understand the labels on these cards. They have tons and tons of very confusing labels. But once you understand what they mean, you can very confidently and very easily match them to your camera. So let's dive into the label. Let's go for a deep dive and see what all of this stuff means here. The first and most obvious label we're going to discuss is going to be the storage capacity or basically how much data your card can store expressed in gigabytes. So 16, 32, 64, or even more gigabytes of storage. And this is going to depend largely on what you're going to use your camera for. Are you going to be shooting only photos? Are you going to be shooting JPEGs or raw images? Or are you also going to be shooting video, etc., etc.? And you will notice that the larger their storage capacity, the more expensive your card is going to become. Now, this is not linear, so the higher the capacity, you will see that the card is going to become a lot more expensive. So you don't necessarily need to buy one really large card. Sometimes it's cheaper for you to buy multiple smaller cards. But this is an extended topic. I would like to skip to the next very important thing linked to your storage capacity, and that is your file type. So there's three types of SD cards. There's the simple SD, which is old, forget about it, we're not even going to talk about it. And then you basically get to choose between SDHC and SDXC. Now, what does this mean? This mainly mentions what type of formatting your card is in. So SDHC is formatted in FAT32. If you don't know what FAT32 is, don't worry, you don't really need to know. The only thing you need to know is that there are certain limitations. So SDHC cards can only be a maximum of 32 gigabytes in size and they will also chop up any file that's larger than 4 gigabytes. So if you're going to be recording long video files, you will see that you don't just have one big one, you will have multiple smaller files and maybe you don't want that. Now, a more modern uh, type of card is going to be the SD. XC cards and these are formatted in XFAT. Again, you don't need to know what XFAT is, but it means that it can have some pretty massive storage capacity up to two terabytes. So I don't even think they're selling two terabyte SDXC cards. But the main advantage here is going to be that you are not limited to four gigabytes files. So if you have an SDXC card, you will know that you can just hit record and it'll just keep going and you'll just have one big file instead of multiple smaller files. The next label here is going to mention the read speed of your card. So this is not super important unless you're like a journalist or somebody who constantly needs to offload massive amounts of files really, really quickly. This basically means how quickly you're going to be able to transfer your files from the SD card to your computer or something else. And for me, this is not super important. This is just a matter of a couple of moments. Much, much more important is going to be the write speed values of your card. And there's multiple labels that we can discuss about this. Let's dive into the subject. Buying a card with a wrong write speed is probably the single biggest mistake you can make when picking an SD card, especially if you're going to get one that is too slow. If you get one that's too slow, that's like the equivalent of buying a really fast sports car and then driving it with a handbrake on, for example. If you're going to be shooting 4K video, you're your device, your, your camera is going to be just spitting out large amounts of data. But if your SD card is not able to ingest all of that data quickly enough, you know, it's going to spill over, it's going to start dropping frames and you might get choppy video, for example. This might literally ruin your end result completely. So you really want to make sure that your SD card matches the write speed that your camera requires of it. Now, on the other hand, if you're going to get a really, really expensive card that's able to write at extremely high speeds, but your camera does not write at those speeds, you'll just be wasting money. So even though you get the faster card, 
you're just going to be spending more dollars or more euros without getting any extra benefit. Now, what kind of labels do we have here on this card that are going to tell us how fast this can write? In the top right corner of your SD card, you're going to see a number in a circle. This is going to be the basic speed class. And there are four classes, two, four, six, and 10. So the number represents the minimum sustained megabytes per second write speed. So the higher the number, the faster the sustained speed is going to be. Now, most cards these days are going to be class 10. Another speed related class is going to be the UHS class. This class offers faster transfer rates intended for high resolution video. Now these speeds can only be achieved if your camera also supports UHS. So a UHS 3 card has a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second, while a UHS 1 card only has a minimum write speed of about 10 megabytes per second. Now when it comes down to shooting video, this is probably the most important label for you to watch out for. It's going to be the video speed class. So if you're going to be shooting 8K video, you will definitely need a V90 card. But, you know, let's be real here. Most of us don't want to shoot 8K. Most of us can't shoot 8K. And for many, many years to come, the vast majority of photographers out there are only going to be shooting 4K video. So if you get a V30 or V60 card, this is going to be plenty for you for a long time to come. If you're the type of person that's going to be shooting very, very high bitrate files, then you probably don't even need to be watching this video. So let's just say, if you're going to be shooting 4K video in high-ish bit rates, a V60 card should still be plenty for you for a very long time to come. Okay, so maybe your head's spinning now because I'm just dropping all of these acronyms, SDHC, UHS, V30, uh, and you're just like, come on, Dieter, uh, let's just slow down here and let's get down back to reality, get away from the acronyms. And that's exactly what we're going to do because you need to match all of this information to your use case. So, for example, I picked this Fujifilm X-T4 because I would like to shoot uh, high resolution photos in RAW and I also like to shoot some video 4K up to 60 FPS. And the way I like to use this camera is by just traveling. So I go out for a day or I just go out for maybe a week of hiking and during that time I want to shoot loads of photos and loads of very short video clips that I then compile into like travel style videos or just um, time lapses or that kind of thing. So the classic typical travel everyday life hybrid shooter. So probably like you there's lots of people like me and then I needed to make a couple of choices. So the first thing that I needed to look out for when choosing my SD cards one, because this camera can take two SD cards right here, is they need to be fast enough to match my camera speeds. So the way I know what I need to get is I go to the website of Fujifilm. And then when I came to Fujifilm's website, I could read there that the X-T4 can use SD XC cards, UHS-2, V90, up to 512 gigabytes of storage space. 512 gigabytes that's a lot and those cards are really really expensive and I don't really need them. I also don't really need the V90 because I'm not shooting in like super high bit rates anyway so I can save some money. So what we're doing here is we're going from what is the bare minimum that I need to match, what is the maximum that I can get and then in between there what is the good price point for me. So I went for 64 gigabyte card for my photo uh, photography so I've never managed to fill up 64 gigabytes of photos, not even in a week of hiking with friends. And then for my video slot, I picked the 256 gigabytes card V60 because I want to just be able to record in these higher bit rates. And I've also never managed to fill up 256 gigabytes with my camera right here. But again, this is linked to my use case. I'm not shooting full length interviews. I'm just shooting loads of short clips. So you need to use what I just taught you about reading these labels with matching it to your camera and matching it to your use case. So you're just not spending more money than you actually need to be spending. So before I give you some examples of some brands or product lines that you might check out to get the card that you need, I would like to shortly mention the channel right here. So my name is Dieter. I'm an international mountain leader and I'm very, very passionate about just 
travel. I know it's a YouTube cliche, but I just love going out into mountains. I love to go and check out cities and then enjoy the whole experience visually, which means bringing along a camera. So I'm always talking about these subjects. How do you plan trips? What is a good outdoor gear to get? What is a good camera? How do you use these lenses? And also, how do I edit all of this stuff? So all of this together, that is what this channel is all about. And if you enjoy that kind of thing, you might want to consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. And at least, you know, if you've made it this far, give me a like because it really helps. Enough of that stuff. Let's show you some examples of good cards to get. Personally, I've always really enjoyed using SanDisk cards. They've always done exactly what they promised. They've always proven to be very reliable. And that is the thing you want. You don't want to be worrying about your cards breaking on you. So whatever you get, because I'm not sponsored by SanDisk or any other brand in any way, just make sure that you don't get the absolute cheapest stuff because an SD card is definitely the type of product where buy cheap means buy twice. And in the worst case, it means buy cheap Lose, of, lose all of your holiday photos. So some alternatives to the SanDisk cards might be the Toshiba Exercia Pro cards, the Lexar Professional 2000 X series, or the Sony SFG cards. One last thing, it's always worth checking out your manufacturer's website because they will very probably have a list of recommended cards to be using with your specific product. Now, before you go, I've also made a video about do's and don'ts with memory cards, so maybe you want to watch that. And I hope you enjoy using your camera. Go get that card, and I'll see you in the next video.